Hey everyone, this is my most recent video synth build. It's uh, model number GVS009, and I've called it the Vapor Dream. Vapor Dream. Uh, aesthetically, it's a bit of a successor to the 100 PFB, and functionally, it's similar to the IFD, but in place of the uh, patch bay on that one up here, there's a spot for this customized little mini LCD monitor. Uh, I've got a neodymium magnet on the upper portion of the inside of the enclosure here, as well as on the base of the monitor for easy attachment. And it's got two dedicated hookups on the back for power and video output as well. So I'm gonna try really hard to keep this video brief as I've covered the uh, functionality of my builds in previous videos. So if you wanna learn more about these machines, head over to glikes.net in the uh, visual devices section. I've got uh, all my previous builds with their own pages uh, and each of those has info, photos, and some demo videos. So on the right side of the machine, there is a latching push button for power on and off. There's also a switch to go between NTSC and PAL video output. The rear IO has a uh, jack for power. This runs on 12 volts, unlike all my previous machines because the uh, monitor does require 12 volts. Uh, this takes audio in via either an eighth inch or a quarter inch jack. We have a VGA video output. We have a uh, power out and composite output for the monitor, as well as a primary composite video output. And then like all my previous builds, this has kind of the same layout. We've got image shift up, down, left, and right to push the image around. We have a button right here to go into menu A, where we can change things like the vertical and horizontal size, the hue and the saturation and whatnot to adjust how our feedback is behaving. We have a button to easily zoom in and back out. Over here we have our primary color mix knobs for red, green, and blue. So we can dial out and in each of those colors and mix them. We also have buttons to pulse the colors on and off. I do have the hue shifted a little bit, so red is a little pinkish. Each of these colors are a little off, but uh, you get the idea. Up here, this is our primary oscillator. We have an on and off switch here. This LED will blink with the rate of our oscillator. Now with this switch in the down position, it's running like an LFO. And in the up position, it's like a standard oscillator. And uh, right here, we have three sends for each of the colors. So let's send it to the red channel. Dial out the speed a little bit. And if I put this in the up position, it's so a standard oscillator. We can locate multiples of 60 hertz to build some scan lines in the color that we're sending it to. Then with the depth, we can dial out how much it's actually affecting what color we're sending it to. So if we dial it out, we're not really sending it there at all. And with the shape, we can kind of make it a, a bit less harsh. Then above the directional controls over here, this button in the middle, as well as this switch, are what let us freeze the image on screen. So this button just lets us pulse that freeze. And we can also flip the switch up to latch it in place. One thing you might think about doing is making an adjustment to the color and you can unfreeze it. And when you release the freeze, it'll make that adjustment. Up here is the section for the uh, internal audio amplifier. So we have an on and off switch for that, as well as gain for the uh, audio inputs on the back. I'm not gonna go into how the audio input looks and works, so uh, be sure to check out the video I did for the IFD where I go into uh, that in depth. What I will show is that uh, with this thing on, uh, these sends act a bit like a noise generator because at full gain, the internal audio amplifier is a little noisy, which looks really nice when sent to these color channels. So here's it just sent fully to all three color channels. So by introducing noise, we can actually get some kind of vertical columns.
Vapor Dream does have CV integration, so you can uh, work with it in a modular environment. Over here, I've got a Mother 32. Um, so I'm just gonna take the LFO out of here. And uh, we have an input for the red, green, and blue channel. These are unipolar, they respond to zero to five volts. So if I send it to the red channel, then we can control that color channel with the LFO on our modular. And if we get that LFO up to very high speeds, then we can build scan lines and multiples of 60 hertz with this as well. It's a nice way to start introducing some shapes and variation. Maybe mix that in with uh, one of the noise generators. external device with the internal oscillator. And then we've also got CV gate inputs to trigger these directional buttons up, down, left, and right. So we can take something like the gate output from the Mother 32 and send a trigger on each of these steps in the sequence. So let's send that to up. So on each trigger, it's sending it up one tick. You can do the same for down and left and right. And then right here, we've also got a switch that will let us kill any of that directional CV input. Because if we're in the menu and we wanna make an adjustment to something like vertical size, the horizontal size, we don't want our incoming CV to be messing around with the menu. So it's just nice to be able to easily turn that off. And then we've still got left and right. And an adjustment for zoom. And it's the same over here. We have a kill switch to stop the uh, incoming CV for that as well. And then lastly, we've just got some menu buttons up here. Uh, let me move this out of the way so we can see it a little bit. So we can cycle between changing brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue. So if we were on brightness, then this would be plus and minus. So we can change the brightness to go up or down. And these settings are saved in between uh, turning this off and on. But uh, this second menu right here, if we were to make adjustments these are reset each time, so I'll typically dial in a nice starting point and then can make adjustments on the fly over here. So if I were to dial the uh, brightness way out and then reset this thing, this brightness will be back up at its default. So uh, with the way I have it set right now, if I turn this off and then back on, even though I had that brightness dialed down a bit, once this thing comes back on, it will uh, probably be, I think, uh, pretty pastel looking. Yeah. So then you can just dial up the saturation, change the hue a little bit, and quickly get back to a nice starting point here. So this has been a pretty basic overview. If you're interested to learn more, head on over to glikes.net and check out the visual devices section. I might suggest checking out the video for GVS006 
the IFD. That's one of my more in-depth overviews on functionality. And there's also hours of demo footage available uh, on this YouTube channel as well as my website. This model has some features that others don't, and it also lacks some features that others have, uh, due to the fact that each one of these is fully customized based on requests. So if you're interested in having something custom built for yourself, my website has a contact form, as well as a dedicated form for video synthesizer commissions. The Vapor Dream was commissioned by, uh, forgive me, I don't speak French, Prête de Signal. Perte de Signal. They're an artist-run space for digital art based in Montreal. Uh, lots of cool stuff, go check them out. Also, hey, while this is a fairly complex build, the basics of some of this stuff can be done pretty easily yourself if you're interested in the DIY aspect of it all. I've got some resources, schematics, and information on my website related to some previous builds, including things like the VGS35, a device that makes it easy to add some lo-fi glitches to a video source. Uh, you should also be sure to check out people like Jonas Burrs and Lo-Fi Future who've put together information that can help you get started with some DIY experimental video stuff. I've got a number of ongoing projects at the moment, including some updates to these machines, uh, new standalone devices that I'm prototyping and hoping to release, and some other projects that I'm really excited about. So if you want to keep up with what I'm doing outside of YouTube, feel free to follow me at Glikes on Instagram. I also try to keep my website blog updated regularly with what I'm putting out. If you like the Vaporwave track that I made as an intro to this video, I ended up finishing a full version, so I'll uh, put a link to that in the description. And as always, I want to say thank you for checking this out. Uh, again, that's glikes.net, at glikes on Instagram as well, and uh, I'll catch you here with the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.